Okay then, uh, you were saying, Miles. We were talking about what we were talking about. About the sky, the building. And well, the, the buildings, it's uh, basically having spotted this fluidic reality yes. problem. Um, having, having spotted this fluidic reality mm. issue where fluidic space is dynamic. Yeah. And uh, we used to explain that it's at it's, uh, it, it's Sky News. You, you would, you know, some of the chats we would have overnight amongst the crew would be quite, quite illuminating. Yes. And um, basically, it was like if you have um, ten peas in a pod. Okay. Each yeah. pea just knows that there's another pea in the pod, but they yeah. can't really tell that anything has changed unless one of the peas goes. And there's space to fill. And then for that brief few seconds or mm. minutes, space in the pod is sort of temporarily larger. Yeah. And you get a different feeling. There's a little bit, little bit more space, but then the pod shrinks. Right. And then everybody's nine peas in the pod. Okay. However, if something then comes in mm. to the pod, then the pod has to expand, and then that, that's it's 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 at those points. When one P goes or one P comes back, yes. that you notice that well, that's your only opportunity to notice okay. that the relative space time environment that you're in has changed. Okay? Mm. Now, the point about space time is a bit like people who live in houses with a long lease. Mm. They think it's never going to change. Yes. There's, nothing is flat in the universe, mm. it's just a curve. Yes. A very long curve. So the point about that is that we shouldn't expect space-time to be stable. So that it could be a perfectly natural feature of, of existence that space, relative space-time goes up and down like the, like the weather. Yes. You have high pressure and you have a low pressure. Yes. Weather, okay? So yeah. high density, low density, space-time. Okay. But the point about it was that there were certain places where you would get these sort of anomalous issues. Mm. And then you, you had this sort of uh, this problem with the giant black octopus sea anemone type thing. Yeah. Uh, and as Sky expanded, I got um, in one of the other buildings, there was a particularly sensitive and coherent uh, engineer from another company before they sold and moved on. And he explained to me one day, Miles, you've got a crab on your back. Right, so this was a creature which was on the back and it's, it accesses into the back left. Oh, right. So this kind of thing, he was able to notice this thing as well. So what was happening was this was actually a building which subsequently was taken over and it was that building which I kept monitoring a lot of anomalous activities and problems. Mm. And um, one of the problems would be um, where people actually would draw graffiti when they were building and they had temporary walls up. Yeah. The people would draw these eyes, little spheres, black spheres. Some yeah. people actually drew, uh, these were artistic people, this was an art area where people would. Mm. And you actually draw little spheres with spikes coming out of them, a bit like a sea anemone. Yes. The point is those were visible and people were picking up on these phenomena, these, these devices. And drawing them subconsciously. And they were drawing them subconsciously. Okay. And there was also a, a time when there was a lot of, um, during lunchtime, they started having make you feel nice type things. And uh, there was a lot of white kitchen, uh, white bathroom tiles that you were asked to paint something of whatever you've come into your mind. Okay. And on those, uh, a whole series of these um, bathroom tiles, mm -hmm. people were drawing things like big octopus with tentacles. Okay. Do with you tentacles. have any of those? I have them on on, uh, on pictures and I've actually put them up on... What photographs though? I photographed them on a okay. the cell phone. Okay. And uh, there's the big eye with the, with the, with the um, tentacles coming from. Can you get them out and attach them to this? Yeah, well I'll have to dig them out. This is going back a long time. Now. Okay. Um, and so th those particular... In other words, it was in the consciousness of people at Sky Oh. that they were perceiving these kinds yeah. of items, these okay. etheric items, yeah. right? Now, in terms of the thing which was on this valve, it was many years later yeah. that we got a name for it, and it's called a scuttler. Okay. 
And no. how did you get the name? Well, I talked to other people who are aware of them, and they explain they're pretty nasty things, and mm. they're not good news. Okay. I was then told very bluntly that if I saw the much larger ones, yeah. the only thing you can do is get away, okay. get away fast. Yeah. The larger ones would fill this room. Oh, really? Right, okay. So the point about this is that there's a lot of activity going on mm. and it's affecting uh, accessing or changes to space-time and clearly there are objects and devices operating in a major broadcaster yeah. which is affecting all the consciousness of its viewers, Ooh. plugging into all the viewers and their consciousness. Wow. Uh, that is a danger to, that's a real and present danger. Yeah. Okay. So I kept monitoring this situation. Okay, but can I ask you, what sort of people were informing you about the scuttlers? Uh, well, for instance, I got the name of a scuttler from a from a person who does this kind of work, um, and I don't want to give too much away about them. But basically, they're very perceptive women okay. of a much higher level of consciousness, and they would be they wouldn't brag about it, but they just get on and do it. They did a lot of energy work. Okay, so, as we call it. But a scuttler basically is something which is a bit like a tan, um, a bit like a tarantula yeah. type spider, okay. but it moves like a crab. Okay, I like spiders. Yeah, well, the big big spider. In other words, it would scuttle out of the way. Yeah. In the same way that crab mm. would go out of the way. So yeah. if somebody says I've got a crab at the back, that's like a scuttler. Yeah. Right, and the point of what scuttlers are, they are information hungry devices. And I've actually uh, asked Chris Thomas about this, and he explained that they are man-made, of alien origin, and they are there in the virtual domain to access information systems, and that's what they infest information systems. Okay. So finding them in a broadcaster or finding them on a piece of broadcast equipment is logical, because they're accessing the information sure. or doing something with the information. That's the thought. See when you when you make when you write music or you perform music or you um, do speech or whatever it is that's this thought mm. and you're speaking it and it's yes. a thought that's encoded as a broadcast which you then interpret on the radio and listen again. Yeah. You can do the same thing with writing something on a letter. Yes. The letter is thought encoded. Yeah. Squiggles. Yeah. Which generate an image in your mind and you mm. can some code. You can say for instance Jack and Jill went up the hill. Yeah. Okay, so that is Jack, a, a, a boy and a girl going up the hill, yeah, right? Yeah. So you've got that visual picture in your mind. Sure. You can actually subcode another message with that mm. image of the two people going up the hill. Mm. That's a piggyback. Yeah. It's a piggyback signal, so that gets into your consciousness yeah. below the sub, below the conscious level. Mm. So this is actually evidence of a an attack or a, a, me a mechanism of controlling our consciousness okay. and accessing our consciousness at a sub-state level before right. you become actually conscious. So what's going on is that the broadcast system, coupled with the electrical supply system, coupled then with the creation digital systems with a mm. much higher bit rate of knowledge and information, yeah. uh, is, then co is then accessing our cognitive abilities. Mm. And we know that if you observe something, it's the observer effect. It's the, you, 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 uh, the observer. Young, young split beam experiment, you know, where you have two electrons, one electron going through two slits. Yes. Young's slit. Okay. You know, to determine yeah. the, it's determined is like a particle or a wave. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the point about this is. It's the observer which changes the reality. Okay. Okay. The observer is the observed. The, the observer manufactures the reality out of its consciousness. Okay. So if you measure something, yeah. You change it by measuring it. Okay. The other concept is Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The Schrodinger's cat is locked in a box. Yeah. The cat is either alive or dead. Yeah. The point is, you then open the box and you then see the cat. Alive or dead, yeah. Yes, but was the cat alive at the time before you yeah. opened the box and died? So this this is a concept of you know you don't know the cat's alive or dead until yes. you open the box. Yeah. 
So the action of measuring or observing yeah. the event determines whether that exists. And this connects with a thing called the cosmological anthropic principle. Right. Where, for instance, if you find a roof slate, mm. the roof slate yeah. uh, means that it's from a house because yeah. it's a roof. Yeah. Which means that there, the, the, there's a roof, which means there must be wa walls to hold the roof up, which means there must be inhabitants. Yeah. So somebody created that thing. So, that, so, so taking one part of the puzzle, yeah. you can then generate the inference that because you have that part, the rest must exist. Mm. It's a bit like having a dinosaur tooth. Mm -hmm. That means there must be a mouth so, so big to hold that tooth. Yes. And it's got to have a number, and so and so forth. You can construct, yes. maybe not an accurate picture of what was going on, but yeah. you get the general idea. Yeah. So the point is, by it means that somebody or some nefarious agencies are working through our broadcast system yeah. to access our consciousness and thereby change the physical reality that okay. we exist in. Okay. Now, if they're changing the physical reality that we mm. exist in, it means reality that that we exist in is not necessarily the reality that whoever's doing the changes okay. exists in. But would these creatures be implanted there? Would somebody have Well, put somebody them had, there? somebody's putting these things there. Now, the information I got about the giant sea and enemy tendrilic life form yeah. was that these are life forms which are indigenous to other realities and have been brought here for the purposes of and malicious of malicious intent. They're being effectively farmed and they're being used on us and they don't want to be here. Oh. Right? Poor creatures. And, and we are, the, we, and we, they're using us, they're feeding off us, they're, this is the point. Okay. So it means that there's a, <coughs> it means that we have something which has got access to multiple of dimensions that are bringing things here legally by violation of dimensional law, so to speak. Yeah. And we are the target. Okay. So, for instance, when Sky Digital was launched in the Battersea Power Station, mm -hmm. there was a, it was a real screw up. The, 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 it, it was a big flop of a party, basically. Mm -hmm. Very exciting, but basically that was because the intelligence transfer sequence was operating to, yeah. to shut that effect down. Wow. And that is something which should be noted very carefully to those who wish to interfere with Sky Television. All right? Yeah. So the point about that is, um, because what we discovered was in the pirate radio days, was that any anybody who shut those stations down and attacked them, going way back to the 1960s, yeah. without exception, that without exception, went. Went? went. Just went, lost power. Okay. When in the case Absolutely, of the Irish government, yeah. every single government that ever actually t tackled the pirates and raided them, gone you know, pretty quickly and there were no exceptions to this so when uh, for instance uh, this, the main era of pirate broadcasting or free broadcasting yes. under the Irish constitution not illegal but free and unlicensed broadcasting yeah. that was the point about this yeah. station uh, and you lost some revenue uh, the point was that the prime minister that shut them down was Charlie Hockey and yeah. he ended up in disgrace Okay. With a major, massive embezzlement and all sorts of things, and the the other minister of communications, Mr. Burke, he then was thrown out within months, or okay. with it, with various forms mm. of corruption. Mm. With in the, with Britain, uh, Mrs. Thatcher, the last major act, once she got Radio Caroline raided, Radio Caroline for some reason had some some hold for years that was the only ship that stayed behind after they were closed down yes. in 1967. Yeah. Caroline was eventually shut down in around about 1990, I think. And then they actually, okay. the Dutch, mm. for some reason, the British had to get the Dutch to raid that, the Caroline. Wow. The British didn't do it. The British yeah. did it to another radio station called Laser, went in there, starved it out, and brought the, the Laser radio station in because it didn't have the same protection okay. that Radio Caroline had, right. whatever Caroline had. The British would not mm. take it out. They could take it out easily. They were, Caroline was on a, like a fortress. No, or something. Caroline was on a ship. Was it? And Caroline, Radio Caroline, was built in Ireland. Yeah. And uh, was part of two ships in 1964. Okay. That came out from Carrickwood Lock in Ireland, which is a known ET zone. Okay. 
<laughs> and set up two stations, one near the Isle of Man and one near Frinton on Sea in the south east yeah. of England, and covered the whole of England with the whole of British Isles with most of the the you know Ireland, Scotland, Ireland and Wales and the, and the densely populated part of Scotland. Okay. They got these signals because of the propagation characteristics of saltwater sea and the way the way medium wave mm, okay. worked on the sea. It was extremely effective. Okay. Um, medium wave loves an ionized so solution of yeah. the thing so it got got out very effectively. Okay. Um, I'm learning. So so the point about that is those ships had some kind of protection, Caroline. Yeah. And one of the last things which Thatcher did was have Radio Caroline raided and very soon after that Mrs. Thatcher was out. Wow. And we all know now that it, it attacked her um, Mentality her, 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 her mind and yeah. as, such, as, as such. So um, th that's a fact. Okay? Wow. So I was tracking this situation at Sky for a very long time and noticed yeah. these dimensional artifacts and problems and effects and noticed when the new, shop, the new building was going up which was built over the sewer, mm. the junction of this massive sewer. That was one of the problems with building anything there because you couldn't put, um, you know, you couldn't just build, build a building there because underneath there was a, there was a big hub for the uh, West London sewer system. Wow. And subsequently we know there's a major underground tunnel system down there. Because one fine day I walked past the manhole at the junction at Sign Lane where Sky is and there are deep, a deep tunnel system there. Wow. So the point is that's where the Sky News building is, it's over some kind of a place where this... So in other words there's something going on on the sewer. Okay. Now subsequently a long time later we mm. now discovered from a, a young man who claims to be the son of an MI6 agent about yeah. this black goo. Yes. Now the kind of stuff that we were encountering at the pirate station was anything we got, any second hand equipment we used to get as surplus or as, as uh, stuff that had been sold on, mm. which came from BBC transmitter sites, mm. had this etheric black goo in it. Wow. It was a black toxic energy yeah. and it wouldn't work. The only way to get these things to work was to completely dispel all the stuff out of this, out of the equipment and clear it. Okay, and how and, did you do that? Well, I had to do that and that was what I do. How did you do well, it then? I do it. Okay. So the point is that that's how we got the pirates money. Well, but how did you do it? Well, I did it. And, and that's, that, that's it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so the point is that that we, that we discovered these anomalous dimensional effects mm. and equipment we got from the BBC source uh, or BBC transmitter site source, which yeah. also involved independent local radio, had this toxic black something in it. Okay. We didn't know what it was, but we just knew that it wouldn't work as a pirate transmitter unless we purged it. Okay, but was it oily? It looked like black oil, it but it was a it virtual. It was it was in a virtual domain. You only got a brief glimpse of this stuff. You just it looked oh. it looked as if the um, the transmitter had actually been dro dropped dropped in in a barrel of crude oil. Yeah. Okay. Now, I then described this because we got a transmitter, which was a former transmitter from the pirates stations in Dublin, and this was a very unique case where a pirate radio transmitter was then put into a BBC transmitter site in Londonderry yeah. and used for a radio station which got, a, which got a license which had been a former pirate. Okay. Okay. Now it turns out that the owner of that radio station had been abducted. So we're having abductees, pirate radio, black goo <laughs> and cool. BBC all wind up into the same bloody mix Ooh, here. And Sky. Or, and Sky TV, most particularly Sky. Yeah. Um, because the function of Sky TV was to generate the multi-channel environment and uh, to allow this other forms of thought to be broadcasted to wake people up. Because as long as the BBC was around, nothing was going to happen. Yeah. So um, this all goes into the subcoding of music, mind control and reality management. And we now know with the Jimmy Savile situation, where Jimmy Savile was the icon for Top of the Pops. Yeah. That based on what was going on with Jimmy Savile, mm and yeah. we don't need to go too far into that, but no. it means that the BBC was hosting or, or protecting and promoting a very dark source of energy. Mm. And this was then being encoded through thought 
mm. with the music they were transmitting through Radio 1 and through the BBC system. God. So, so subsequently, um, I noticed that Sky's new building had some t of these anomalous dimensional effects. There were problems. Mm. Some would say there were optical illusions where, uh, in the same way that if you look at something, uh, if you look at a lot of black and white squares, they look yeah. as if they're going one way or the other way. Yeah. It's an illusion of the way. That, so whether this is an illusion or not, but it's it's an effect that I noticed when I was brought to Chartres Cathedral, in Ch uh, Chartres Cathedral yeah. in France, yeah. where the apparent relative size of the cathedral yeah. changed depending on how far the way you looked at it. Ooh. So, for instance, if you're very close to Chartres Cathedral. Mm. It's a large structure, it's a, it's a cathedral, and relative to the other buildings of the village and the town around the building, yeah. it's not hugely big. Yeah. It's, the, the, it's maybe, th maybe three times the size of the other buildings, and maybe five story buildings there. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So it's only about, th about three times the size. Obviously, the, um, the main tower, the main um, sp 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 spire of, of, of the cathedral yeah. is very tall. But the main structure of the building is is, is not dispro it's not dispropor disproportionately bigger yeah. in a, to a great deal. It's a big building, yes. Okay. But when you get further away from the village, mm. Shark Cathedral has the illusion of being massively larger than okay. it really is. Mm. So, having spotted this anomaly, this the, this it, in, other, in other words, its relative pers perspective. Mm would change depending on how far you are. It's relative, mm -hmm. The size relative to the other would get bigger. Right. It, would, it's, it had an inverse perspective. Wow. So as you got away from it, yeah. it, would get small, it would get smaller, but it would relatively get bigger to the, to the surrounding area. Wow. But there'd be, a, there'd be a point where it would spring to normality. And the same issue happens with Sky's new Harlequin building. Wow. Now the point about the way Sky's new Harlequin building is designed is it's designed so it will suck dark energy in from the bottom, circulate that through the whole structure and then vent that through the chimneys outside. So it's manufactured as a black energy sucker from the basement over the sewer. Deliberately? Yes. So that it would then infuse this through the whole structure and therefore everything inside will be infused with this dark energy. Because it's located on this sewer. Yeah. Now the point, as, which is a source of dark energy, right? Mm -hmm. So the point about the sewerage system is yeah. that we now know that according to, and again this is all alleged, yeah. and according to, okay? Yeah. So, I, I, so the point is that we now have been told about the secret black goo which the British recovered from, the, from Antarctica yeah to use as an intelligent, sentient, mm. fluidic source of, of new power mm. for both industry and also in the super social program. But, we f but the British found that um, this resulted directly, it's been claimed by some researchers, in a very large number of deaths amongst Marconi scientists in the 1980s. Okay, is that part of alternative three? Um, alternative really? three is another thing altogether. Okay, but, because they're uh, taken off to the, Mars there. The, yeah, the so-called gate to Mars. But yeah. the, 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 the point about the point about these deaths is these people suicided themselves, so they're okay. terrified. Mm. One guy one guy put a rope around his neck, oh dear. tied it around a tree, got into his car, and drove off, and ripped his head off. I mean this is horrendous. Yeah. Whatever was going on. But this black goo that they discovered is a sentient, intelligent fluid. Mm. In other words, it behaves and it behaves by what it wants to do and won't do what you want it to do. Okay. It responds to electrical signals and the point about keeping it down in Antarctica was it, it, it's, it's kept in a stable, relatively low active state. Because of the cold? Because of the cold. Okay. Now this was discovered um, by the British. Now the point is today I've received an email about the black goo, and it's mm. called uh, A A. It's called Oog Oogie, A U G I E. And some scientists are now saying it's actually a crystallization of the Earth's life force. Wow. 
and the Earth's life force is recrystallizing, is crystallizing and shutting down, going into a reset condition, according to the scientists. Okay. So what it appears to have been going on is that they've been trying to use this black goo in the etheric domain, in the broadcast systems for nefarious purposes, but it looks as if it could be biting them back big time. Good. Now the Russian data from the email we got today was that basically 40% of those exposed to this nanovirus, it's like a, a virus, it's mm. a nano thing that gets in, we might you. 40% mm. die, but the 60% who, who survive mm. become more sentient, more intelligent, more thinking, mm. because their DNA is being um, re-corrected. Okay. And there is some evidence that this, uh, from other sources, that um, this black goo enters into the system, goes through your entire body, goes right down to the molecular level of your DNA, discovers your entire past history through your DNA, yeah. and then will actually leave the body as a black tear out of the ear. It just moves, leaves out of the ear as a black, like a worm, okay. and then goes into the earth. Into where? Just disappears. Into the, into the, into the okay. Room. So what would be the point though of, what's it doing, gathering information? Whatever it's doing, um, it's meant to actually come from a comet um, which came here about five or six thousand years ago. Okay. And is a, it's, it's an intelligent, fluidic, black goo. Okay. Now the problem about this is that a number of the Amash witnesses that we've interviewed are being shown that the Earth is in trouble yes. and are being shown that the Earth will be completely decimated with all life destroyed. Now the point that's going on at the moment is that there's a dark force mm. which is re-engineering the Earth's energy grid, oh. but the Earth's, the, grid, the, the Earth's living pulse, the living energy which forms um, um, which forms um, your grid across the planet, yeah. which people put the standing stones up thousands of years ago, yes, and yes. this energy. This energy grid, some people are saying, is responsible for maintaining the dimensional reality of the holographic nature of the reality that we're actually in. It yes. actually makes the, the dimensional focus, yeah. the holographic focus where matter and the boundaries of where all the elect electrons and atoms actually resonate at. Okay. Okay. That they all resonate at it and provide a, a wave front, a yeah. force field, which yes. we call matter. Okay. Yeah. That's what we are made from. That's what everything here is made from. Mm. If you're uh, if you're another intelligent life form, yeah. and you come from a place where the dimensional matter or the holographic focus is different, yeah, and the holographic focus is determined by the um, function of the time-space field that mm. we exist in. If you can't survive, if for an alien to exist in our dimensional reality, mm. you have to, they have to effectively, like a deep sea diver, they have mm. to go to a different pressure, mm. so to speak, mm. on how they're going to exist, mm. which is very difficult for them for a sustained period of time before mm. they have to evaporate out and, and disappear from our reality. Okay. In order for them to sustain themselves in our reality, A, they must affect our consciousness, because our consciousness is, is, is generating by perception the reality matrix around us. Okay. okay. The observer effect, yeah. which I said earlier. Yeah. So if you're going to change things, yeah. you must access our consciousness, so therefore you must access the broadcast and mass propagation systems. Yeah starting by the, with the electricity supply system which feeds into every home yes so the and secondly you then must um, actually change the the earth's energy grids which is what some people in the imagine project have noticed where the earth the earth's grid system is being re-engineered mm. now basically mother nature itself mm. something is trying to re-engineer mother nature itself mm. okay so once they re-engineer Mother Nature, mm -hmm. everything in this reality will flip all sentient life, all life, in all realities, dimensions and times, mm. will then shut down. Mm. And then the system will then be reset for the alien life form, which is to use this part of space-time to exist in. Okay. 
Mm. Well, what will happen to humans? We will not exist anymore in, in any form of corporeal form. We so will exist be... only as, a, as an energy which will never be able to reincarnate as a physical body ever again. And that applies to all life on planet Earth. So if, if this black goo, as some scientists are saying, is actually the Earth's life force, mm. Now, again, one scientist is saying it's the Earth's life force, some people say it came from a, a, a comet or something. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the point about this is that it looks as if basically the fundamental tools of the existence of what we are mm -hmm. is now under imminent threat of collapse. Alright? Wow. And wow. then something new will come along. But the point is, people who've been exposed to the black goo yeah. seem to be very beneficial thing for them in that they're so more intelligent and more sentient. Would th that would imply then that humans would continue? Well it would mean that humans or things or anything else around here would, would continue depending on who's got control of the... Well if the black goo is doing that to humans... The black goo has its own agenda. Yes, but it's allowing humans to become brighter, more intelligent. Yeah, well this is one of the problems with the super soldier program. British super soldier program wanted um, soldiers who were going to be super strength and all that. Yeah. But they were becoming more empathic with the culture. They were going in to shoot. So that's not what shoot you want. What? The well, they're going to go in there and shoot and blow up a palace, you know, a, 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 you know the enemy. All right. The enemy being the but black goo. The black goo was the making the people who no, were dominating them. No, but the whole point of a soldier is you go in there and kill them, the enemy. Mm. If the black goo when it's injected into you as a super soldier, was making you more empathic, oh, touchy-feely, and yeah. wanting to understand the culture. Yeah. It's not a very good soldier. Okay. So they, it's claimed that Maybe they then... Maybe a soldier. Well, it wouldn't, a soldier is basically a company going to go and blow, kill somebody, right? Yeah. That's what a soldier does. When they've been ordered to. But yes. Yeah, but, the, but this is the point. But they're being taken over by something that is making them more intelligent then it would reverse, it would turn the other way. Well, this is the point. You don't yeah. want your soldiers going in there and ha sitting down and having a conversation and discussing their, their culture. Okay. It doesn't sort of work that way. All right, but uh, if it happens, it does. It just happens. Wow, man. So that's it. So are we all going back to source then? We could be. Sounds like. But it looks as if we've got a problem Chewy, in that um, we have a, 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 a somebody or a, an intelligence which which is to remove all life on this planet from the equation and create a situation where it exists at our expense. Mm. But they're not going to do it. They're not going to win. Well, we have to be alert to that and make sure that happens. Yeah. Well, it would imply, <coughs> you know, the fact that this black goo stuff is making people more intelligent when it has access to them would imply... Well, it, the, the black goo basically is performing what the intelligence transfer sequence do, does. Yeah. Because that's what the, the, the ITS did. Yeah. The ITS, the ITS, intelligence transfer sequence, yes. that gave populations so exposed mm. a higher level of intelligence. It didn't right. tell them what to do. And crucially, it wasn't a control mechanism. Yeah. It enabled you to do things. Yes. So that to me is benevolent. Yeah. So that to me means that this goo stuff must be for our benefit. Well, let's put it this way, the goo has its own agenda and when the goo establishes a new species we'll see what that species is going to do. Because it's, it's, it's now in the London sewage system. Yeah. According to the sources from MI6. Sure. And um, it's interesting that that um, it's where Sky put its building. But subsequent information just but it, before it it's lands, not affecting Sky people so well, it is. is it? Well the point is that the point is that um, the whole the whole point about this is that the ITS, if it's attacked, the attacker will engineer its own destruction. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yes. So whatever that's, that's the way so, I like so, it. So whatever, I like that. Well, yeah. Personally. And so therefore, mm -hmm. maybe all yeah. the warmongers will. 
well, that, themselves. Well, well, but that's a whole lot different ball. Okay, I know, I know what's going to happen. First, they will have the ETs coming and they'll be landing. There'll be first contact and all that. Mm. Well, and the first contact already happens. Some, some, yeah. Some, yeah, okay. Some of the, I'm talking about mass landings. Mm. I think you need to be in the, on the shot for this. No, it's okay. I'm yeah, talking no, about the, mass landings. No, I can't because I'm not an authority here, okay? I'm just saying because what I've learned. Um, and this ETs are from the two angels, the two rebel angels from the Council of 24. So there are 22 good ones. But the you need to two, be on the shot for this. Two angels uh, <laughs> Oh God. We're on white screen here. But, oh, Julie. but I'm, I'm going to be in trouble for saying all that. Oh, watch, watch here, watch here. I'm going to be in trouble for saying all that. Well, we leave that out. Anyway. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what I know, okay? Go on. Forget about the shot, okay? No, but the, no. we're recording come at the on. moment. Sit. The we're recorder's recording. on. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So the, the thing about that. Yes. Okay, you're talking about okay. the ghoul. Yes. And you're okay. talking about the termination of the human race, basically. All life. All life, okay. But from what I have learned in my search for truth and knowledge, <laughs> um, apparently there's the Council of 24, the 24 Elders. The 24 Elders. Well, this is what you say. I, I don't know about No, this. This, this is what I've read, okay? I've, I've gathered, or i heard, or I've learned, all right? So this is not what I said, but what I've learned, I'm sharing with you, right? So there are 24 elders. The 24 elders are basically uh, councils from the, the highest realm, from God's source creator, 24 elders, councils of the supreme governance of the cosmic, the infinite cosmic family of light, all right? But two had rebelled against the council, two of the 24. So there are 22 good ones now monitoring and assisting with the experiment in planet Earth. So these two that had rebelled are what you call Luciferian angels, the rebels that had come out and they are creating havoc on the planet and they will be the ones who will be gathering the uh, ETs, the extraterrestrials who will be coming down on the mass landings and giving us all sorts of um, advanced technologies, free energy technologies or whatever that they're going to give us in our living conveniences and all that and um, the majority of the human race will be buying that to deter them from searching uh, from within to, in order to awaken, okay? They, yeah. they have, each and every one of us, our task is to find out who we truly are. Okay, but I don't see how you can transfer the idea of black goo, sentient, causing intelligence mm -hmm. to arise in human beings yeah but I'm because okay you don't see the free relation. free energy would yeah. just automatically come yeah do you see what i mean it's like yeah. no more mm -mm. when you're bright enough you oh. say no more oh hang and on a minute stops. hang on a minute this is interference here okay they're interfering with our personal search for truth and knowledge. We are supposed to, this is a big task for, for us human beings to get back to our origins, to know who we truly are. And it's, 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 it's an evolution, okay? The evolutionary process that we have to actually really find out. Okay, so why, it's, it's how, not physical who, angels who we were. then? Um, not physical, it's like an idea. I think basically what we we'll do is can, we'll can take I a break. Can I just finish? Can I just finish? Then, can yeah, I just, just finish the whole oh, thing before? Oh. <laughs> okay. And then because the concept hadn't been <laughs> brought up yet to, here to the surface yet. Okay. The concept is that they are trying to put a decoy there so that we don't actually get to our goals fast enough. Mm. And the decoy is, is this free energy technology, is this things uh, making us uh, have a better life and all that good living that we forget to do to continue the, with the search of the, our origins. Right. Right? So when we when we are caught up with all that, 
we then forget about doing this hard work of finding out who we are and going back to the origins and going back to source. So we're lost. So we go through another cycle of ascension, uh, descension uh, of 26,000 years. Thomas doesn't accept ascension, does he? He, he accepts a, a ascension, but this just going up to the fifth dimension thing is a load of rubbish. Because yeah. we're multidimensional mm -hmm. beings, like up to 18 or whatever dimensions. 50. He said 50 dimensions. So the idea of just going up to the fourth or fifth dimension is nuts. nothing. So basically, uh, ascension is something which is natural. Yeah, it's that, that we are, so we are, yeah, we are it's, going to have to do little, this. Yeah, it's a little it, bit like when a butterfly emerges yeah. from a yeah. caterpillar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we are not. I'm not talking about the black goo. Okay, the black goo is another, another. I know, but you brought something else chapter. in, like yeah. twenty-four well, angels. because you were 22. saying because you were saying that um, that's the end of the human race. Absolutely, it will be the end of the human race if, if we are no, interrupted if, all the time. Well, if, and this, race, if, if this process mm -hmm. of re-engineering it, might be, Mother Nature it itself, might be, it might look, if we become more the, intelligent, yeah, but this is the target of the it Illuminati. might be getting back to what we were supposed to be, more intelligent. I'm sure we were meant to be more intelligent, because not well, so subservient. Basically, we'll I, have to wait I brought this in like, because you're okay, talking folks, about... I think, I think we yeah. just need to close off here. Okay. Because this is very important. And we no, maybe can yeah, continue no, this under a second interview later on. Yeah, essentially. Right now, the cup, there's a, there's a deafening noise in this room. Yeah, essentially. Is there? The deafening noise is there is no kettle boiling. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my I'm okay. going to say goodbye. Okay, maybe I don't know how to say I'm it properly. Later but on, Byron we'll have will a tell chat you that. With, with Byron okay. will tell you that, okay? Okay. Yeah, you will accept that. By, perhaps you accept that from the master. Well, if he says it um, in.